can the Democratic Party survive having been unable to protect the working class, let alone advance its situation? Well, I believe the situation is so dire in the United States at the moment that my concern at this point goes beyond whether or not the Democratic Party can survive. The Democratic Party now being completely captured by corporate interests through campaign finance of elections and also through the fact that they're literally investing in individual stocks on their own, meaning they're very much in favor of this uh, wealth redistribution from the bottom to the top. That leaves this huge void for workers in this country who are angry, who are living lives of economic instability, who are grappling with uh, insane uh, poverty in many cases, and want to understand what's happening in the country. And what makes the situation even worse is we have consolidation of our media, corporate capture of our media. And rather than getting the full story, rather than helping the public to understand what's really transpiring in this country and why this inequality exists in the first place, what they do is they dive into endless culture war issues that further divide the country and essentially fuels some of the hatred that we're seeing among the electorate right now toward one another. And so I'm genuinely concerned about this country devolving further into fascism. I think that we're seeing signs of that as we speak with prominent public figures openly declaring war on Jewish individuals. And yes, I'm talking about Kanye West. And, you know, five years ago, statements like this would have seemed hyperbolic to me. But I do think that since There isn't really anything being done to make Americans whole, to ensure that we actually tackle inequality effectively. These narratives in media, these narratives that are being spouted by the right wing in this country will absolutely, you know, fuel fascism uh, in America and potentially across the world. I'm genuinely concerned about that. But fact of the matter is, what's really impacting the most Americans in this country right now. And it's the way our economic system is set up. The fact that wages have remained stagnant since the 1970s. When you take into account inflation, wages have actually gone down considerably since the 1970s. And we have this unelected body of individuals called the Federal Reserve making decisions quite openly, candidly, about crushing workers further by increasing interest rates to respond to inflation. And no one in the media, by the way, addresses the fact that part of the inflation that we're seeing in this country is fueled by the Federal Reserve just pumping out money and giving money to corporations with, uh, you know, with low interest rates, of course, or no interest rates in some cases, and also through a policy known as quantitative easing, which is incredibly destructive to our economy, especially what it's, when you consider what it's done to our housing market. So these are maybe complex issues, but they're issues that I would venture to say the public is intentionally not informed on. And instead, all of the focus has been on everything that makes us different, everything that we disagree on. You know, again, the cultural issues, the, the religious issues, all of that. And that's further dividing the country without addressing what the majority of the electorate actually happens to agree on. Right. I was struck, as I think you must have been too, listening to the Fed Chairman Powell using repeatedly the word pain, P-A-I-N, that the policies we have to now go through will cause pain. And each time he said it, he carefully avoided making it clear, pain for whom and who would not feel the pain. I mean, it was extraordinary exercise in the make-believe that the media, whether they're conscious of it or not, are engaged in promoting. 